Hello everyone. The title of today's episode is Divinity is its own inspiration. You see, let us very playfully see a transcendental equal sign from the word divinity kind of equaling the statement that it is the sacredness of how your moment of awareness to form is simply and naturally present. What that means is it is sacred because it's here without having to be here. It is divine because it's here without having to be divine. You know? When we find the divinity that perhaps ancient wisdom communicates, it is one where in our state of non-interpretation we are finding an existential flow where the being is not in a realm of dictation to even be dictated by these ideas we're trying to make uh, into a thinker. We must become aware of existential movement and as we become aware of it, we're saying it's the same existential movement within our being. So the same inspiration that is keeping this, as, uh, this uh, tree in front of me in manifestation is also the same existential intelligence that has brought me here. So there's a commonality in our origination based on how I am aware of the origin. And so it transcends an I. That last pillar falls. And it's not that Gandalf is there to tell you to run. But an honest fool carried on. The divinity is in how you are whole before you are in a hole. When one becomes self-aware, when you simply go in the park and just sit down very gracefully in nature and just look around and begin to see how when you look out, there's an objective sense of you, but when you are aware, when you're really looking, you see there's a subjective presence too. And so as you're aware of the subjective sense of a body, of thought, let's say, as you're aware of the physical body, then there is an implication of this existential observance that is, there is a knowing within you that there, there is something more than all that you know. Because the moment is carrying the torch. So states of non-interpretation, in a sense, provide a sense of emptiness that holds all fulfilling possibilities. And all fulfilling meanings and interpretation. For the emptiness is an awareness to creation that you are the creative experience here. So we may look up and think of a creator uh, or, or uh, some omniscient form, but it is not just one form which is intelligent. Do you know? It, it, it's, it's as if the omniscience must be known for there to be awareness that all forms are omnisciently here. So this cannot be gained if you're constantly, your attention is encaging yourself in ideas that have become zones of comfort when ideas are here to catalyze you, they're here to challenge you, they're here to shape your world. For why else would poetry be in words? So, this awareness to your sense of creative space and your sense of being rather than a sense of something that is doing, uh, whether it's an aspect of you're considering it's yourself or other, when you see the, how, where self and other are, they are within that which is aware of the self. So your absence and the intelligence is aware of the hologram.
and it sees that the hologram is no longer hollow, for direct experience is here. So as much as you want to create the physical manifest relationship of you having to be under some hierarchy in your, in your sense of devotion, devotion must be free. What that means is love must be free. You must not just love certain ideas and just be like, oh, these people are terrible. No, no. You must love all manifestation. For why else would there be devotion to a God that is within everything? Because omniscience is a reality beyond your reality. Meaning that do not seek to have things make, uh, be just real and be meaningful to only one sense of self. There's a passage here. What that means is we are growing every moment. And since the beginning of your manifestation in this plane of existence, the pilot of consciousness has been navigating. But it is a matter of conscious knowing which enables an ability. So we are here not to do a lot of hard work, actually. We are here to be the direction of physicality. So in a sense, you are kind of aware of all form, and so you are the guiding flow. But it's intuitive, it's innate, and if you were an individual, the collective would say, don't wait. What that means is, know in an instant what you are. And your guidance is all that is present in your moment. So the profoundity of that um, uh, quote from a man who had walked on water, was that ask and you shall receive. Inquire and see the nature of cosmos fit that frame. But also see that because the nature of the cosmos can fit that frame, any frame is possible. What that means is you're moving in an art gallery of time and space and every f reality and every form is something you're existentially observing but your knowing is beyond it. For a multidimensional being that is not limited to certainty. Its certainty basks in greater certainty. What that means, before freedom can be dominated, there was no need for freedom. So you are becoming aware of what you naturally are and what that naturally sense of being is doing. So that tree is growing, you know, and it's, it's being very fruitful in its design. So similarly, you as a human being are like this unique seed of, you know, uh, self-awareness here to a form. So you are the blend of all possibilities. So you are not defined by someone who, who is defining or a certain action. Uh, not, not a certain action, in, by a certain uh, definition. You are, uh, you are fine regardless. But you must see that direct experience must be aligned with a, a sincerity and honesty in your attention to see that it is not an external problem because any sense of other is coming from a sense of self. So we want to just see what's present in our moment of experience and by being aware of it without just rationalizing to only focus on a little bit, we are a moment that is aware of all that it can be. Divinity is its own inspiration. For once the drop remembers the ocean, it could have never been dropped. Much blessings and namaste.